I want to finish where I started. And uh, I know I've started many things and many series in this church, but sometimes I don't finish. Either something happens or I go very far. When I come back, I forget. But this one, I have, I'm finishing. You know when you are finishing, you feel good. I feel good that I'm finishing. At least this one. Uh, this, this book of Habakkuk. 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 Depending on where you come from and the teacher that taught you. We are looking at chapter number three. Chapter number three. In chapter number, in chapter two, it was full of bad news. God was speaking to Habakkuk and telling him, Babylonia, they are proud, they are arrogant, he's going to deal with them. But in Habakkuk chapter 3, it is full of good news. Tell your neighbor good news. The book ends up with hope and praise. And that's a good thing when you're ending up with praise. And the question that many of us would need to ask is, how did the prophet move from initial worry? Because we said when he started, he was asking the why. And he was so fearful that Babylon was going to crush uh, the Judah. Judah was going to be crushed. But here he ends without worry. He is not fearful. He is full of confidence. He is full of joy. And he is full of praise. How did he get there when nothing around him had changed? In other words, nothing has changed, but the man is changed. And my prayer is that, yes, God will change you even when the surrounding has not changed. You know, I don't pray to move out of karate, but I pray that karate can change. And if karate doesn't change, then I can change. Because once I'm changed, then my focus will be different. And Habakkuk changed. The people were still mocking God. The people were still violent. They still, Babylon was still moving towards Jerusalem. Outwardly, everything was just a messed up as it was in the beginning. But in chapter 3, the man is changing. Nothing has changed from the outside. But it's good for you to know that Habakkuk, the man, has changed in the inside. How did that happen? Because that is crucial. And this is chapter 3. It gives us the answer of what happens. The outline is very simple. Habakkuk 3 has three outlines. It's divided into three. Number one, prayer. Number two, vision. And number three, testimony. So Habakkuk, the worry person. We remember when he was asking why. And we looked at why is the why is that we ask. Sometimes we ask why. Why did this guy propose only to divorce? Why did we get married for one year or two and then we cannot sustain it? Why did it have to happen? Those are questions that we ask. Why did I carry the baby nine months and the baby dies? Why? Why did I go to school and after I've cleared, before I even work and my mother, my father can enjoy the, the benefits of my working, uh, the, my father, my mother dies? Why? Why should we work so hard and my father worked so hard but when he died, my uncles have come and they have taken the land that belongs to us. Why is this happening? Is God anywhere? Why did this El Shabaab attack us and kill some of our people? Why did it happen? Why can't it happen in the sea where there is nobody? Those were the questions that Habakkuk was asking. Why Babylon? Why? They are evil, but why are you using them? He was feeling, feeling it. He was feeling so bad about it. But in chapter number two, it starts all by where he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise myself up. I'm going to move in a watchtower. I'm going to watch. I'm going to be prayerful. I'm going to wait on God as I pray. I'm going to wait on God as I seek his counsel and his direction. I'm going to be there. But you know, sometimes we say so. But after we have said so and we have left the place of the company where that feeling was, we kind of go back and we are still complaining. It's like coming to church and people are worshiping. You feel like crying. Then you walk out, you remember your problems. It's like when we are worshiping and you're just worshiping and the devil whispers something that uh, you did not do. And in the middle of praise and worship, we, we hear some of you say, Shindwe! And then we know the devil has worn you up because you are worshiping. You are so excited about the goodness of the Lord. And all of a sudden, it's Shindwe, Shindwe. 
And that happens. So there he was. He's watch, he was watching. And the second thing that we find from him in chapter number two, he gets to a place in verse number four. And then he declares the righteous shall live by faith. And you know, it's a matter of convincing himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous, those kind of excitement that we can go out with. But remember, it is God who speaks to him in the rest of those verses by telling him word by word what he's going to do with Babylonian. He's going to destroy destroy them. But in chapter number three, this guy has really changed. He is not worried. He is not fearful. He is not scared. He is just confident about what God can do. So he has prayer, vision, and testimony. And I will tell you this for free, that you and I will be blessed if we can bank on those things. First of all, prayer. Pray and pray and pray. Even when things are not right, keep on praying. Number two, allow God to give you a vision of what he's going to do. See it. See that revelation. And number three, carry a testimony with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let's go to prayer. Habakkuk, chapter number three, verse one and two. Habakkuk, chapter three, verse one and two. Prayer. This is what he says. Lord, I have heard your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Let's go back to verse number one again. I, I will read yours. This is a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet. Verse number two, he says, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I have heard of your speech. And was afraid, O oh Lord. Revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. That is the man of God who is trying to get out of where he is. But he knows, now I will only get out from where I am if I am changed. If I get changed. And how do I get changed? I, I will go into the archives. I will listen to God. I will read about God. Then I will know God. So therefore he says, Lord, I have heard of your speech. And because of hearing of your speech or your fame, I stand in awe or that I was afraid. Why am I afraid? Because of your mighty deeds. You know, when we think about God, he's awesome. Meteorological department has studied that people study about the weather. Do you know they, they can only pick big things? But they have no idea of a cloud the size of the fist of a man. They don't see that. But that is what God deals with. So there is no rain, they say. And then rain pours and people are killed by the same rain. Why? Because you and I pray and we know that God, even if it is so little, we know God will multiply it. And there is rain all over. We bless the name of the Lord. And no wonder, then he says, because I have heard it and because I know it, Lord, repeat it, do it again. You know, I need, I need you to help me to preach to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, may God do it again. The reason is because in the past he did it. May he do it again. When you had a headache, he did it. Even now when you have cancer, let him do it. In the beginning he did it. Even now when you're walking through divorce, let him do it. When your child was unwell, he did it. Even now when your mother is unwell, let him do it. Repeat the same things that for is saying. May the Lord repeat them. Because once they are repeated, then your life will never be the same again. We suffer because we forget. You know, some of us grew up or were born during the Mau Mau. And I remember my brother hitting a Muzungu in Thika Street. A real good one. And the Muzungu went home, came with a gun and a rifle. With the dogs, they chased him to our house. So when I see what God did, because you know, here it is a case in Baya. I to escape here. My brother, I have only one brother, that one. That one. Chapa mzungu kofi moja ya kema nyoko. Ikaingia ndani kabisa kabisa kabisa. So when we see what, you know, and there were places we could not enter without ties. You could not enter to have tea, you know, and so on and so forth. And the freedom. And we are saying, God, let us remember that you can deliver. Take us back again. Do it again. Do it again. Give us more than 
than we need. Supply our needs according to your riches and glory. So Habakkuk says, I have seen your fame. When did he see his fame? It is because God gave him a revelation. It's because God started working in him. May God reveal what he can do to you. Because once you know what he can do, worries and fears will not be a portion in you. In the face of the impending calamity, the prophet prays for a full manifestation of God. I think that is key. That God come and manifest yourself fully. Come and manifest yourself with your power. Come and manifest yourself with your ability. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, come. Come with your power, show your mercy in the midst of this judgment. This man has changed, he's saying, I know there is judgment, but manifest yourself. I know there is hunger, but manifest yourself. There is poverty, but manifest yourself. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I know bad times are coming. I accept it, but at those times, we still need your manifestation. It's, it's like he's saying, I'm not fighting against you anymore, Lord. I'm not asking why anymore. I know, I know, I know. If you come and manifest yourself, even this Babylonian will be wiped out. I know. Remember mercy. He's asking God's mercy so that he's not wiped out. He's saying, don't wipe us. Don't allow these guys to wipe us. And that is perfect. You know, Maombi, Maombi, Nduguzangu Maombi, Maombi ingine ni yaunafiki. Maombi ingine ni ya unafiki na shida yetu kubwa ni hii sita waambia wakijua atanichekerea siyo una shida lakini injinia nikiwaambia watanichekerea si waambi ati nataka kuombewa nini unspoken May God answer you unspoken. There is nothing unspoken. If I want a baby, I don't have one, I need a baby. Period. If I want to get married, I need a man. Period. If I'm a man, I need a woman. Period. But please pray for my unspoken needs. You know God can reveal it to you. What? God will... You know, and I've said it before, and thank God that that sister is not in the house, but I always tell her. <laughs> she, is a, she is one of my supporters. One time I'm praying for people in the old church there. And she comes and said this, pray for a man. Actually she put it this, pray for my husband. Now if you tell a pastor to pray for the husband, know that your husband atafungwa. Si atakuwa bound. Si atakuwa released. Si atawekwa huru. Si ataanguziwa double portion ya upendo. Si ataombewa mbaka. But as I close my eyes and I was almost tears were coming out as I pray passionate prayer to my sister's husband to love her and so on. She was not closing her eyes. Because she did not have one. And I'm praying for one. <laughs> So finally she said when I finished the pastor, thank you for the prayers. Lakini kwanza uombe ya kuje, alafi yo maumbu tuongeza. So you see sometimes some of the prayers that you allow people to pray for you will not happen because they go wild. And they start praying for things, you know. Pray for my finances, they think ni mtu wame kunyanganya. So they are praying. Alie kunyanganya, alie kuibia, aziwachilie sasa. Alafi unamuangalia ania kuombea alafu wafadai unamuambia. Hazijaibiwa, sina. What I'm saying is Habakkuk comes to the Lord and he is honest and he is desperate. God will hear a honest prayer and a desperate prayer. Let me tell you this. Hata huyo dada unamwangalia unaona hawezi yoleka. Wewe sio unaoaga. Kazi yako ni kuomba. Aweze kuole. Kwa sababu nataka kuoleka. Na hata oleka. Saa chide yako ni kusema. Uyo nakiwa na watoto hawa tano. Naweza oleka. Na uyo wako na waine. Hapa. That's not your problem. Your problem is. I will pray to the Lord. And I will be honest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I will be 
honest. Now, you might come here and somebody is praying for your husband and they are praying, Arudi, Arudi, you, you, they know Alienda. Arudi, Arudi, na wewe umamfungua macho, kwa sababu utaki Arudi. Toka, unane mekwambia Arudi. This man was honest, may we become honest. May we pray prayer that are honest. You know, Lord, I, mimi sisikia kikingereza. Nimefudishwa nasi mavabu na manaoni bado inanitisha. Lakini mungu, kazi ya mikono. You know, so that we don't keep on praying for you to get an A in mathematics and an A in English. And you know you cannot get it. Am I talking to someone? Unajua wengine kingereza kilikuwa muswaki. Esabu ilikuwa mulima. Wengine opposite. Esabu muswaki. Kingere, and then you wonder. Mungu, si unipatie both. Nionge kingereza na nionge. Ni wachache wamebarikiwa hivyo. Kini wengi tunapewa kidogo. Nafikiria wengine mkipewa zote mtaringa. Mutaanza kutwaini. But the man of God comes to the Lord and he is honest and he is des desperate. God is waiting for you to be honest. God is waiting for you to be desperate. Notice that he's asked, he asked God to do it again in his day. Do it in my day. Remember, he knows and he has been told it will take a long time. He does not even know when, but in his prayer he says, Lord, do it in my time. Do it in my day. Reveal it when I can see it. It's like you saying, Lord, hii eh, ugonjwa ya kuto kukula kanyama. Bwana uniponye, nikiwa na meno. Hii siku moja, ninaruwe mbavu, ni enjoy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lord, remember me when I can make use of what you have given me. Honest, honest prayer, he prayed. Do it now, Lord. Do it in my day. Do it in my time. And yet, as we pray for that, Al-Shabaab hits here, ISIS hits there, we have all this corruption, even as we pray. But we are saying, Lord, may you do it in, your, in our time, when corruption and Al-Shabaab will be a thing of the past. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that is the kind of prayer he is praying. You know, it is easy to give in to doubt when you consider the gravity of the world situation. When you think about the world, actually it confuses us. We think, you know, just the other day, you know, uh, I got some canote from the, my, my WhatsApp. WhatsApp ni mzuri, lakini kuna watu wegine wanakutumagia vitu za ajabu na kweli. Sawa? Vitu za ajabu na kweli. Sasa hii ilikuwa inanipatia majina ya watu. Huyu alishikwa kwa corruption na huyu akashikwa kwa corruption uli alipatikana na pesa amebeba na gunia milioni kadhaa cash yani you know and when you think about it na sio watu wale wakubwa sasa hao ni watu wengine wadogo the voice of the devil tells you you see you see how terrible corruption is but i'm saying god do it in your time let there be a time that they will not demand anything from me but they will give me service when we were coming from Webuye, because we went to Webuye, we went to Webuye. Tulienda kusimama na Charles. Na Charles ni mtu mzuri. Ukisimama na yeye, hata unaeshimiwa. Tulieshimika. Na tuliwa represent. Hatu kuongea bari yetu, tuliongea bari zenu. Nini watu wazuri. Tukirudi Charles, nilishikuo. <laughs> Kibira aliedesha gari 64 kilometers per hour. Kashikwa. Pare talbo. Akakuta tumegojwa. Imeandikuwa 50. Initially I thought they are joking. Because 64. Kuna gari ikienda 64 ni kama inaenda pole pole. Ni kama, ni kama 20. Kwa even I was wondering tumeshikiwa nini. 64. Gari inaendaka 200 na 200 something. 64. Hata. So ninasimairia... Jamani. Deriva rate driving lessons akatoa. Munaenda 64 instead of 50. Tukaka. Sasa ni kukaa. Tukija kushikuka kulikuwa na dada wetu anaitwa Triple H. 
Wengine mnajua tripo hichi anafanyaga nini. Kwa hivyo nafikiria tayari alikuwa ameenda 64 ya kwake. Akashikwa lakini mnajua yeye ni Tukakuta anaachiliwa na akiwaambia mumuachilie hata huyo ni bishop wetu. Hawakushikie hiyo. So, mimi nimekaa pale basi iko pale. Mwenye basi akasikia huyu kopro ana accent ya kikamba, akaanza kuongea kikamba. E, mwa kuitoneka we. Ndio <laughs> amusiwe. <laughs> na huyu anakasirika anaongea ki, ki, Kiswahili ya Kinandi. Nakasirika sana. Mi naangalia tu nilitoka kwa gari nikaangalia. Na sasa nilikuwa nimevaa suti na nimevaa tai. Ukiniangalia suti na tai na gari. Na walijua hiyo gari ni mimi mwenyewe. Ende we mimi nimekaa pale. Kibira anapelekwa kule anarudishwa huko. <laughs> Kukaja askari wawili wanafikiria sasa waniongeleshe nitoe kitu. Kanaambia unajua mzee eh kweli eh unaweza weka cash cash bill ya 1500. Alafu eh, lakini kama unataka hutai kutoa tukupeleke eh Lumaganda Lumaganda 10 kilometers from Tabo. E, nikasema nisamehe akasema hatuwezi kukusamehe saa hiyo yule wenye basi amepeana mkono wa handshake ile kali na nikaona haikuwa tupu kulikuwa na kakaratasi katikati <laughs> ah nyinyi ndio mnatuombeaga sasa sasa we hauna hamna hamna kitu hamna 1500 kwa ni mna nini sema, sasa wakati nilisema ati pesa wakajua kimeumana Aya basi bishop wacha tuende kule kwa police station itakuwa ni sawa. Tumeanza safari. Kuna kapepo hakajaokoka kana sumbuaga watu wa Mungu. Kanimkujia. Na sikuambia wale tulikuwa nao kana nyemelea tu. Kaka niambia wewe bishop ukisema kweli mwenye basi alipeana ngapi? Kwa kukisama kweli Kalikuwa 250 tuwili 250 tuwili Bisho 250 tuwili Wewe kwa mvuko Auna 250 tuwili Iyo sauti ilikuja Na mini kambie shindwe Nataka kuombea polisi Anyway To cut the story short Nikaanza kupigia watu na, It's good when you are doing a good thing The Lord remembers you Nita kupigia governor Rafiki ya Charles Alikuwa busy tulipelekana na ya naenda kakamega Lakini watu wote nilipigia simu They responded OCS wa Makupa Haka niuliza Bishop niambie namba za gari zako OCPD wa Eldoret East Haka nipigia Niambie gari ya namba yako Nikapigua na mungine akasema Ule station commander Anataka gari ya namba yako Sayo tuko na uyu jamatu Nindege Hamechoka, hamezunguka Na kuna wengine watanguka Kwa sababu wanazunguka Wanakosa jia ya kutoka Askari tuko nae hapa. Mara nikasikia askari ya simu. Arafu nikasikia ya mesema. We driver, jaribu kupinduka urudi. Nikajua. <laughs> Mambo imetendeka. Hata nikamuengage. Kaanza kumpa askia. Kwa sababu he was feeling so intimidated. You know those phones. The phone that he received. I knew it was not coming from a boy of his age. I knew that. So I started to engage him. Sasa hapa, ile shamba inapandwa nini? Ni miwa ama ni mati? <laughs> so that he can feel like... And he started contributing. Naya alis akamuliza, nye mnafanyaka kazi nzuri sana. Naya akasema, kazi ya polisi yata mimi siku itaka. We engaged him so that he can feel he is also a human being. But he was dealing with the wrong number. <laughs> Prayer. Prayer. Even when things are so wrong, we know that God is going to save this nation. But you don't receive a miracle until you desperately need one. Hallelujah. 
No wonder the Negro song says, it is me, it is me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother, not my sister, not my father. It is me, O Lord, standing in the place of prayer. So my greatest challenge to me is the man who appears on the mirror, and that is you and I. Every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you see yourself there, now you are the problem. You deal with that person on the mirror by allowing him to see God who can supply and your life will never be the same again. I was telling first service, the, 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 the Darugo place where the men are having their retreat, the hole up there is so beautiful. The glasses are fantastic. Birds are seeing themselves. So, mukua kudena maskia, birds na piga 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 piga. Inaona kabadi kengine pare na inambia wewe. The guy in the mirror, deal with him. Let him know that there is a God who can supply your needs. Let him know that you're going to trust in that God, nothing else. Number two, the vision. I can see my time is also playing with me well. After his prayer, Habakkuk has a vision of God. The theologian would call this the orphanage. That's a funny term for the appearance of God. On earth. In this case, God revealed himself to Habakkuk in something like a dream or a vision. The prophet recorded all of it from verse number 3 to verse number 15. All of what he saw. And you can read it on yourself. And my notes are those ones. I don't know whether you need glasses to see them. And I need help. And I'm honest. And I'm desperate. So after prayer, maybe we, we, we forget about them. But in those verses, it is very poetic. He is so poetic, which is what you'd expect if a man saw a vision or a man saw a revelation. But the point is very clear. Knowing that his nation faces judgment, Habakkuk prays, Lord, do something. This vision is God's answer. God gives an answer. It is if God was saying, Habakkuk, you have forgotten whom I am. You are talking as if you can't hear. As if you don't have any power. Let me show you whom I am. Because if you understand whom I am, you will be able to sleep in the middle of the night. Now that is critical and crucial for each one of us. That if we knew who God is, we'll relax. Like that's what I told you about two weeks ago when I said, the righteous will live by faith. Whether rain or no rain, we can still trust God. No wonder God has given us rain. But we can believe in God whether there is rain or no rain whatsoever. So in these verses, Habakkuk recounts God's activity in the past. Your past is important. And the past of others is important. So that you go back to the past. When there was famine in Kenya, what did God do? The Lord delivered his people. The Lord provided. Some of us even ate You know the yellow maize. God provided. He has ways to provide. Amen. I like that. Whoever has come, that's a good engineer. You see? Ask and shall be given unto you. <laughs> Amen. So we, we, in this verse, he's recounting God's activity in the past. He is recounting what God did before. And truth be told, if God has ever done anything to you in the past, you can count on him again. Now, I want to talk to your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, has God ever done anything to you? Anything, anything. Say what it is. Say what it is. Just say what it is. Did you tell them what it is? Now, 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 please continue preaching with me. Now ask them, what are you believing God for now? Let, and please be honest. What are you unspoken? Be honest. What are you looking for? Is it a job? Is it marriage? Is it provision? Is it finances? Are you hungry right now? Are you looking for bread? What did they tell you? They say something. Now I want you to hammer the message. Tell them, if God did the first one you told me, he's going to do it again. He can do it again. God can do it again. Yes, what he did before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
So from verse 13 to number 15, it focuses on the defeat of Pharaoh at the Red Sea. Now, remember Habakkuk was not in the Red Sea. So, that no wonder he says, I've seen, I've heard your fame, I've heard your speech. Meaning, he went and studied and looked in the past. And he saw what God did, and this is what he recorded. You came out to deliver your people. You saved your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of weakness, wicked, wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. With his own spear you pierced his head. When his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding, you trumped the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. Hallelujah. Look at the verbs there. It is Habakkuk is so excited. He, he, if you listen to the language, now it's a different kind. He's not asking why. He is saying this. You came out. There was action. God is a God of action. You crushed. You worked on those people. You striped them. You dealt with them. You pierced them. You dealt with them. You triumphed over them. You did it. And this is what God did. He gets all the credit. God can do it again. If he did it once, God can do it again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I think what God was telling Habakkuk, if you had a bigger God, you would be less tempted to compromise. What we need is a bigger God. Testimony is the last point. Now we come to the end of the book. First, there is acceptance. He agreed. You know, one of the things that we need to get to is where we agree. Lord, I agree. You are sovereign. I agree. You are the one who, de who decides the weather. I agree. You are the one who blesses. I agree. You are the one, Heavenly Father, who lifts. I agree. I agree that you are the one. And therefore, he has a testimony. He says in verse number 16, I will wait patiently for the day of calamity. In other words, now I'm okay. I will wait. Are you going to crush Kenya? I will wait. Is there some Al-Shabaab coming? I will wait. Is there some problem of lack of rain? I will wait. I will wait patiently. I will wait for that nation that won't come to, 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 to invade us. I'm going to wait patiently. And this is Habakkuk's way of saying, I get it, Lord. I know the Babylonians will attack us. I know. But I also know you will judge them. You told me. I will wait for that day to come. I will wait. And it turns out that Habakkuk could not wait because he never lived for 70 years to see it happen. But whatever happens, the message is received. He says, I get it, Lord. Now this, the second thing that I find from this verse is there is a commitment in verse number 17. Show us, verse 17 to 18, they show us what faith looks like when life tumbles around us. Now this is the change that we are talking about. Habakkuk is changed. He says this, though the fig tree does not bend, and there is no grapes on the vines, although the olive crop fails and the field produces no fruit, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my salvation. And the word rejoice here literally means to jump for joy. I'm not just a kena, I'm kenere roka. I, I, you know, I don't have the English word there, but joyfulness it simply means you are not just idle. You are so happy and people can see it. You know, there are some people who say, I'm so happy. There is nothing like Fregia and Dani. When they can never look they can never look are you hearing what I'm saying? May God remember us so that the joy will come to us whether those things are there or not. In 2014, 2014 in the U.S., Warren, Rick Warren and his wife, Kay. This is a pastor who pastors a church that when I grow up, I would like to be a pastor of that kind of a church. When I grow up, very big, you know, programs, and they have written many books. He has written many books. I would like also to start writing books. Now I hear Shikuku is writing the second one. 
Kwani mimi tu ni kuandikia tu message nzuri hapa ya kusema ni na forward. <laughs> si wanaweza forward yangu. So this man 2014 the wife was giving a testimony because 2012 their son had hanged himself. Their son Matthew David had killed himself. He had suicide. And you know a pastor like me, my son with suicide, what are people going to say about myself? They will say, I, I don't uh, deal with my children, I'm not careful about them, I've left them. Even when your son gets into drugs and they are children, they would, some will. Or even when they have babies, unwanted babies, and they will, they are still our children. Will you kill yourself? That's what I'm trying to ask. This man almost got hanged because of his son who killed himself. He killed himself because he had mental problem. He killed himself on 2012, but on 2014, 2012 the boy was 27. At 2014 the boy was 29 and the mother is writing this. This is what he says. On July 18, 1985, I gave birth to our beloved gift of God, Matthew David Warren. Holding him in my arms that morning, I had no idea how dark the journey would get for him. And for those who love him, all I knew that bright morning was that I was madly in love with him and could see nothing ahead but a mother's dreams of good life for her son. I remember Easter 1985, I was sick in bed and able to go to church. Rick took the kids to church and I stayed by myself for a few hours. The TV remote by my side as my only companion. But somehow I dropped the remote and could not retrieve it. So there I was alone on one of the most joyous holidays with not even a TV preacher to keep me company. Full of anxiety and fear for myself and, and for my unborn child, I painfully reached for my Bible and it fell open to Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 19. Though the fig tree does not burn, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stars, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go to, on the heights. And this was the word from the Lord to me. And I determined that even if my worst nightmares come true, if my baby died, or I even or never walked again, that I would trust in God my Savior. I would rejoice in the Sovereign Lord. Matthew David Warren was born, and everything seemed fine, but by his first birthday, we began to wonder, and by his second and third birthdays, we knew he wasn't like his older sister and brother. When he took his life last year, that was the year before the, the guy died, 2012, after battling and fighting so hard for decades, a friend sent me Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19 in a sympathy card. She had no idea this message was incredibly significant to me, but it was fitting, bookmarked to his life. Because I had feared for years that he would take his life. It became his greatest pursuit and my deepest anguish. I had to come to the point in which I said, as I had 27 years before, even if my worst nightmare comes true, he takes his life, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. So at that time she said, and so today in his 29th birthday, through weeping, I shouted, I shouted to the watching universe, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Now that is a mother who lost a son, but in it she had all the guts to rejoice in God of her salvation. I don't know what you're going through, though the fig tree, because sometimes the fig tree will have no fruit in it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But how is this possible? Habakkuk has described a total economic meltdown. Ancient Israel was going to go down. But what if your investment go down? What if somebody came and conned you? Just conned you. What would you do? You, he, he sells you air. You know they sell air. 
Somebody was conned with my house in Kawasukari, not long ago, two weeks ago. So I was called by a lady asking me, are you Bishop Peter Kemani? I said, remove Peter, put Jimmy, and that will be me. Then she gave me a story, how Bishop Peter, who used to live in my house, left because he got a better house. And he, he's, he doesn't want money. He just wants somebody to keep his house. He only needs 20,000 per month. And he wants you to put a deposit of 20. The lady, may God help you, men and women. If it is cheap, cheap, anything cheap, a house of five bedrooms in Kawasukari for 20,000? Really? And the lady gave 40. Now I ask her, did you enter the house? She said, no, because when we reached there, he told me the, the, the person with the key has gone with the uh, V8. See that V8? It happened a V8 passed by. Said, See that V8? It has taken the key. So the lady, 40,000. And she was, she asked me to pray for her. She felt, oh my goodness. Nina sympathize now, lakini utamfanyia nini? And she was told by people, kama ni ya Bishop Jimmy, what a Bishop Peter, kama ni Bishop Jimmy, pesa yako hizo potea, lakini kama ni Bishop Peter, I have no, I doubt whether you will get it. <laughs> So what Habakkuk is trying to say that, you know, things can go that direction. Your investment can go. Would the Lord still be God to you? That's what he's asking. Would you still believe God? You've been accused wrongly, put into prison, stayed there for long, and you're still there, rotting in prison, and you know you have done nothing? Would you stay, still say, even if the Lord will still be God, will you still be saying so? What if you lose your job? What if the safety net that you had fails? What if you run out of food? What if you can't pay your bills? What if, what if, what if your loved ones never come to Christ? What if your children end up in jail? What if the doctor says this sickness is terminal? What if you lose your job because you're a Christian? What if you end up in your jail yourself? What if? Could you still say, yes, Lord? I will serve you and will be glad for you. Sometimes, and friends, let it be known, sometimes the fig tree does not burn. The fig tree does not produce anything. Sometimes it happens. Everything you touch is not working. Sometimes there are no grapes on those trees. Sometimes, sometimes there is no olive, there is no food sometimes. Sometimes a few don't produce nothing. Sometimes there is no cattle on the stars. There is nothing. Would you still say, yes, I will serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Nimehubiri mbaka nikaona kweli nimehubiri. Tena nikiangalia saa nimeona hata nimepitisha wakati. He? Because I wanted to let you know. Kuna wakati hiyo kikombe yako ya maziwa itakuwa kavu haina. Hiyo kiondo yako ya unga itakuta haina. Would God still be God? Huyo mtoto wako ambaye ulifikiria ndiye atakuinua, unakuta ameenda, amehepa, ameingia njia mbaya. Would God still be God? Would you still share with others what has happened to your children? Would you still be open? Or it will embarrass you and cause you to feel intimidated. I refuse to be intimidated. Even if there is nothing, I will still serve the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as I finish. You see, this, these guys were taken by the king and they were told to worship the king. But I like the way they told the king. Hey, king, live forever. You, you will never die. You are a good man. King, live forever. Because if you told the king he will die, you are dead yourself. So kings live forever. They never die. 
So king live forever. King live forever. King live forever. But on this matter, first of all, we are not even careful how we are going to answer you. You know, that is very rude. Eh? But king, you live forever. But on well, the way we are going to answer you might not be happy, but we will answer you anyway. Number one, God will save us. Period. God will do what? Will save me. In other words, even you, you can say God will heal me. Yes, you cancer live forever, but God will heal me. On this matter, you cancer, I will not answer you well. Because God will heal me. And then number two, even if he does not, and cancer kills me, he will still be God. We will not bow under any pressure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? King live forever. Let's not be careful how we answer the devil and those things that are around us. If there is lack of food, you lack of food, you can live forever. There can be more hunger in this country. But I'm not going to answer you. I'm not going to be careful to you. Why? Because God can give me food. But even if I die of hunger, God is going to be God. That is the message of Habakkuk. He's trying to tell you, rise up. Don't look down. The wise that you have asked, turn around and say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hope you are. Shall you stand because this sermon cannot end? And lift up your hands and respond to God. Tell God something about your life. Even if things are awful, your business is not working, he will still be God. You, they have said you have terminal sickness. There are some divorce cases going on. If God be God, if your children have gone way why, but you still believe God, you declare, I will not answer you. I'm not going to be careful answering you. If God be God, then I'm going to trust and lean not on my own understanding. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh God, remember mercy. Do it in our time, remember mercy, Lord. We agree. The economy can go down. We agree. Sickness can thrive in this nation. We agree. But Father, we know that it will not kill us. It's only you that has the power. Deliver us. Remember mercy in our times. In the name of Jesus. And Father, it is not our fathers, not our mothers, not our sisters, not our brothers. But it is me. It is me. It is me in need of prayer. Standing in the place of prayer. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the place of prayer. In